And if it wasn't for his wife, he'd have been dead. 1 Samuel 25. Y'all probably know this story about Nabal and Abigail. The problem of life, we make sure we don't get caught up in that wave. That wave, boy, it's show out here today. Very few people are caring about the Lord. If we got that, like I said, this pandemic, these diseases right now, this is at a small rate right now. That's right. If this calls you to stop praising God, you ain't gonna have a chance with them seven trumpets blow. You better make sure you're in the wilderness. Come on. You better make sure. He ain't gonna have a chance. Come on, come on. I'm not gonna have a chance. He leave myself out. Amen. I'm not. Amen. First Samuel chapter 25, verse 3. Let's look at this man right here. Nabal. Are you foolish? Go ahead, brother. Now the name of now the name of the man was Nabal. Yes, sir. And the name of his wife, Abigail. Mm -hmm. She was a woman of good understanding and a beautiful countenance. But the man was churlish and evil in his doings, and he was of the house of Caleb. Now, Nabal was foolish. He wasn't about no word of God at all. He was about making it right for him. But he had a righteous woman, which is Abigail. Very pretty. She understood the book. Now, I said, man, marry a woman that understands this book now. Amen. Amen. Women marry a man who understands this book now. It's going to be some ups and downs. If you ain't never been married, you don't know what I'm talking about. But it's going to be ups and downs. You just got the weather, the storm. Yes, sir. But this man right here, hey, if it weren't for your wife, he'd been dead. Go ahead. Four. And David heard in the wilderness that Nabal did share his sheep. And David sent out ten young men. And David said unto the young men, Get, get you up to Carmel and uh -huh. go to the Nabal and greet him in my, my name. So David wanted his men to go to, go to Carmel and greet Nabal. He needed some, some, some substance from him, some food from him. Go ahead. And thus shall he say to him that lives in prosperity, Peace be both to thee, yes, sir. and peace be to thy house, and peace be unto all that have. This that, is what he tell all him. that house has. Uh -huh. so this is what he tells him, this is his man. He go there and greet him nicely. Tell him peace. But he also want him to ask him for something. Go ahead. And now I have heard that thou hast shears, shears, and now that thy sheep which were with us, we heard them not. Neither was there aught missing unto them all the while they were in Carmel. Now he tell them that it's harvest time. You can shear your sheep. So you got some meat. And make, make, he making them understand that we protected all of your kingdom from anybody coming in and messing with you. So we want to live in for protection, protecting your kid because my, my men need some substance. Go ahead. Hey, ask thy young men, and they will show thee. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, let the young men find favor in thy eyes. Yes, sir. For we come in a good day. Give, I pray thee, whatsoever, whatsoever commanded cometh to thy hand unto thy service. Yes, sir. Unto the son of David. Go ahead. And when David's young men came, they spake to Nabal according to all those words in the name of David. And ceased. Now he came to Nabal, Nabal and talked to him. Now listen to this cat with a lot of pride. Now what are you going to say? Go ahead. And Nabal answered David's servants and said, Who is David? <laughs> and who is the son of Jesse? There be many servants now in days that break away every man from his master. Who is David? <laughs> David is that dude. David is that man. Come on. David will kill you at a drop of a dime when he blank. He will hurt you. Period. He like, who is David? This is pride for my talking. When a man of God tell you to do something, you better do it. Mm -hmm. You better do it. So this man foolish. Now this is what he told his sir, his servants to tell David. Go ahead, brother. Eleven. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my flesh that I have killed for my servants? Yes, sir. And give it unto men whom I know not whence they whence they be. He tell him, my, my, my. Take mine, take mine. And they were protecting his whole kingdom. So nobody would take nothing. Go ahead. So David young men turned their way mm -hmm. and went again and came and told him all those things. And David said unto, unto his men, Gird ye on every man his sword. Yes, sir. And they girded on every man his sword. 
And David also girded on his sword, and there went up after David about 400 men, 200 abide by the stuff. David by the business. He said, 400 men, y'all mount up. We going to go take this dude out and take everything. <laughs> this is how David was. Don't even let these little theologians tell you that these men of God were nice. They weren't nice. God said, David, I can't even let you build, a kid and build me a house because you so bloody. I'm going to let Solomon do it. This is what people don't understand about the men of God because these men of God are so soft today, it don't make no sense. They don't preach nothing about the kingdom of hate, where the hell, or the kingdom of God, how it's supposed to be reigning. And this man right here today said, hey man, y'all mind up, we're going to get this dude. These are goons right here. Goons. And Gideon was the biggest goon. Go ahead. 14. But one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master. Yes, sir. And he, ran, and he railed on them. This is Abigail. Them crazy husband went out there and told this to David. You know how David is? He will hurt you. And look what Abigail, this is righteous wife. Look what Abigail did. Go ahead. But the men were, but the men were very good unto us. Yes, sir. And we were not hurt. Neither miss we anything. As long as we were com com conversing uh -huh. with them uh -huh. when we were in the fields, they were uh, they were a wall unto us both by night and day. Yes, sir. All all the while we were sleep. Well, all the while we were with them sleep. Oh, my phone. Oh, 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 oh. They were a wall unto us both by night and day. They, all were, the they were a wall unto us both by night and day. All oh. the while we were with them keeping the sheep. Now the men were telling them, hey, look, the men were very nice, the men were very nice, they just came and asked, but your foolish husband went in there and told him, and rail on David, disrespected him. You don't disrespect no man of God, especially not him. Not him. He hurt you. But go ahead. Now therefore, know and consider what thou wilt do. Yes, sir. For evil is determined against our master mm -hmm. and against all his household. For well, he is such a son of Belial yes, sir. that a man cannot speak to him. He was such a son of Belial, meaning that he worshiping other gods anyway. He's not about the God that Abigail knows. That's right. Go ahead. Then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves and took bottles of wine and five sheep ready to dress and five measures of parched corn yes, sir. and a hundred clusters of raisins and 200 cakes of figs and laid them on asses. David and Abigail said, come on, we gotta get this stuff together. Mm -hmm. Cause I don't want all my kids or all my people to die. I'm gonna go get this food together so I can take it to David because I know how David is. She was smart, smart woman. She was about the God business. She helped her husband. He didn't even know, he, he, he didn't know she was helping him. Go ahead. 19, and she said unto her servants, go on before me, behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband, Nabal. Because she knew she couldn't tell him he was foolish. Mm -hmm. If he find out that she would take that, he would have stopped her. Sometimes women, women of God know they got to go and do something they're supposed to do. Do the righteous thing. Amen. We see it all the time. Amen. See it all the time. Rebecca, see it all the time. Sarah, see it all the time. All of them. Abigail. Sometimes a man of God miss some stuff. But if he got them eyes in his wife to see some stuff, see the righteousness, he covered. But most people today ain't bought this book at all. They ain't bought this book at all. It's hard to find a righteous woman like this. Go in. 20. And it was so, as she rode on the ass, yes, sir. as she came down by the cover of the hill. Mm -hmm. And behold, David and his men came down against her, and she met them. They were locked and loaded. Go ahead. Now David had said, Surely in vain have I kept all that this fellow hath in the wilderness. Yes, sir. So that nothing was missed of all that pertained unto him. Uh huh. And he hath re requited, requited yeah. me with evil for good. Uh huh. This is what he tells me. Look, man, I did all this for your husband. And he going to return me with this disrespect? And he had, she had to really talk to him. This is what David won't do. Go ahead. And when Abigail, when Abigail saw David, she hastened 
and lighted off and, and lighted off the ash and fell before David. Yes, sir. Her face and bowed herself to the ground mm -hmm. and fell at his feet and wait, said, "Wait a minute, wait a minute, go back. You read verse twenty-two. No, twenty-two. So twenty-two. So and more also do God unto the enemies of David. Yeah. If I leave of all that pertain to him by the morning light, any that piss against the wall. David said, mm -hmm. "Look, I'm gonna kill any." Male that pisses against the wall. I'm gonna kill them all. And Abigail got off that horse, she was talking to him, trying to get him to calm down. Now, good mama, she can calm a man down now. Especially Abigail, she was very pretty. And you're gonna find out David gonna marry her too. Go ahead. 23. And when Abigail saw David, she hasted and lighted off the ass. Yes, sir. And fell before David on her face and bowed herself to the ground mm -hmm. and fell at his feet and said upon me, my Lord, upon me let this iniquity be, and let thy handmaid, I pray thee, speak in thine audience, and hear the words of thy handmaid. Now that she came with respect. My Lord, listen to me. Let me speak to you about my crazy husband. Go ahead. Let not my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial, even neighbor, for all, for as his, for as his name is, so is her, so is he. Nabal is my name. Mm -hmm. It's his name. <laughs> Father is with him. But I thine no, no, no. But I thine handmaid saw not the young men of my Lord whom thou did didst send. She tell him that Nabal is following him, you know, that he's crazy. Mm -hmm. She trying to explain to him what who David dealing with. He don't understand, David. Let me talk to you. Go ahead. 26. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, Seeing the Lord have withholding thee from coming to shed blood, yes, sir. and from avenging thyself with thine own hand, now let enemies that they that seek evil to my Lord be as Nabal. Understand, Abigail is resting her case with David. She's trying to calm him down to talk to him about don't shed no blood, and David listening to her. I just want to show you that this is a woman that don't have pride. A prideful woman wouldn't get off. Up, get off the horse and call him my lord. The problem with the day, they call him much more than that. <laughs> Ain't no respect. But this is what the example of a woman who has integrity, who knows her business of the Lord. She came with respect. Go ahead. 27. And now the blessing which thy hand handmaid hath brought unto my lord. Uh-huh. Let it even be given unto the young men that follow my Lord. Yes, sir. She laying it on the table. She, she buttering them up. Go ahead. I praise thee. Forgive the trespass of thy handmaid. Mm -hmm. For the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house. Because my Lord fighteth the battle of the Lord. Yes, sir. And evil have not been found in thee all the day, all thy days. So that Abigail is acknowledging God has protected us through your hand, David. Because she knows he's the king of Israel. He's the king. But this man is foolish. Jump down to verse 32. I just want to read a lot of that because a lot of these stories don't get read. Verse 32. Go ahead. And, and David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Yes, sir. Which sent thee this day to meet me. Go ahead. And blessed be, the, be thy vice, and blessed be thou, which mm -hmm. has kept me. This day from coming to shed blood, yes, sir. from avenging myself with my own hand. He said, Abigail, you blessed now because you have saved your whole, his whole kingdom because of what you did. I'm going to just walk away now. Go ahead. For in, very, for in very deed, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, yes, sir. which hath kept me back from hurting thee, mm -hmm. except thou hast had, had his task uh -huh. come to meet me. Go ahead. Surely there had not been left any left until in, any Nabal by the, morning, by the morning. Okay. Go ahead. By the morning. By the morning. Morning like any that pissed against the wall. So he telling me Nabal, if Nabal didn't, if you didn't do this for me, uh, Abigail, I'm gonna kill every man that pissed against the wall. She didn't show a sense of pride. Boy, she couldn't go talk to David. That showed that this woman didn't have no Pride. She was very humble. She tried to save her, her people. Jump down to verse. Go ahead. Finish that. Which one? 30, 36. What we at now? 35. 35. Go ahead. 
So David received of her hand that which she had brought him, mm -hmm. and said unto her, Go up in peace to thy house. Yes, sir. See, I have hearkened unto thy voice, and have accepted thy person. Go ahead. And Abigail came to Nabal, and behold, he held a feast in his house, mm -hmm. like the feast of king, and, and a king and Nabal's heart was merry within within him. So this kid having a party, having a party in his house, knowing that David about to come and kill everybody. He he don't know what's going on. The pride was in it. The pride of his life was in it. Go ahead. For he was very drunken. Wherefore she told him nothing, less or more, until the morning light. Yes, sir. So she ain't tell him nothing until the morning because he was drunk. Go ahead. But it came to pass in the morning when the wine was going out of Nabal and his wife had told him these yes, things, mm -hmm. that his heart died within him. Yes, sir. He became as a stone. He had a heart attack. God mm -hmm. killed him right then. Wow. Foolish. Killed him right then. They may have killed him and God killed him. Go ahead. And it came to pass, about ten days after, the Lord smote Nabal, that he died. I told him the Lord killed him. Go ahead. And when David heard, heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed be the Lord, that have plead the cause of my reproach. Yes, sir. the hand of Nabal, and have kept his servant from evil. Mm -hmm. For the Lord hath returned the wickedness of Nabal upon his own head. And David sent and, com and communed with Ab Abigail to take her to him to wife. After he killed him, he came back to Abigail to take her to wife. Understand, many men of God had many wives back then. And believe me, it's going to be the same way in the regeneration of a thousand years. But I don't want that. I want to be a God in that generation. Y'all may have them seven wives. But this stuff going to come back. It's going to come back. I just want to make sure that everybody understands this pride of life that they all had. Got himself almost killed his whole kingdom. And most of all, God killed him for that. For disrespecting a man of God. You got to be careful how you talk to a man of God. All right, let's go to Esther. Esther chapter 1. The pride of life. I just want to give you the examples about this pride. We're going to look at a queen right here. Esther chapter 1 and verse 1. I'll turn to your table of content. We ain't hit that book on thank you. Man. <laughs> this is the pride of life. Don't fall in these waves of pride. When I mean waves, these situations. Learn from these men and women of God and these evil men and women of God. We got to learn from them. If we don't understand this, we will be all in this pride. Let's see an example of a woman in her pride. We saw an example of what a woman was in her pride, which is Abigail. Esther chapter 1. We're going to start with verse 1. Go ahead. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus. Uh -huh. This is the Ahasuerus which reigned yes, sir. from India even unto Ethiopia. Go ahead. Over 107 and 20 provinces. Mm -hmm. That in those days when the king of Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan. So this, king, palace, had, so this king had a great kingdom. He had a lot of properties in it. So he going to have a party to celebrate. And he had a queen that he wanted to show off to the men, the men that came to the party. But something happened. Jump down to verse uh, 4. Go ahead. When he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom yes, sir. and the honor of his excellent majesty many days, even 104 score days. So he's showing it off. 104 score days. That's 160 days he's showing off this king. That's a long time. Go ahead. And when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan, the yes, palace, mm -hmm. both unto great and small, seven days in the courts of the garden of the king's palace. So after he showed off his kingdom, he wanted to show his wife off. Jump down to verse 9. What verse? Yeah, verse 9. Go ahead. Also, eight, 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 we had and the and the drinking was according to the law. Yes, sir. None did compel. Mm -hmm. For so the king had appointed to all the officers of his house. Yes, sir. That they should do according to every man's pleasure. So every man in the house had a good time, basically. Go ahead. 
Also, vastly, the queen made the feast for the women in the royal, the royal house, which belonged to King yeah. Ahaz. Uh -huh. So the women had their part with the queen, vastly. But the king wanted the queen to do something. But she was working with this pride on her. Let's see what happened. Go ahead. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king were married with wine, yes, he, sir. he commanded Mewhamen, Bishop, Harbonah, uh -huh. okay. Harbon, Harbon, uh -huh. Bigthah, Abathah, mm -hmm. Zephah, and Carcass, uh -huh. the seven ch chamberlains that served in the presence of Ahasuerus, the king. So he telling all these men that was in front of him to do something. Go ahead. To bring Vaxi the queen before the king with the crown royal to show the people and the princess her beauty, for she was fair to look on. They're like, go get my queen. I want to show how beautiful she is. I want to show off. Listen to the response she said. Go ahead. But the queen Vaxi refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth, and his anger burned in him. So they were very disrespectful of what she did when he told her to come down. Because why have you got to obey your husbands? That's what it is. He ain't telling them, babe, he trying to tell them to go see him. They don't want to show off. Because they had a big feast. But now I ain't going nowhere. Go ahead. 13. Then the king said to the wise men, which knew the times, for so was the king's manner toward all that knew law and judgment. Turn down to verse, uh, verse uh, 15. So the king got very disrespected and he was embarrassed. Verse 15, go ahead. What shall, what shall we do unto the queen Vashti according to law? Yes, sir. Because she hath not performed the commandment of, of the king Ahasuerus by the chambers. Yes, sir. And me, and me, me, me excuse me, okay. and me, you can answer before the king and the princess. Vastly the queen have not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princes. So she was disrespectful all over the kingdom. Mm -hmm. She's supposed to be the queen. Mm -hmm. He said, he didn't do wrong to you, king. She did wrong to all of us. Because mm -hmm. he wanted her to come down. You know how so many women is today. I ain't got to do it because you say you do it. You told me to do it. That's your husband. You got to do it. If he ain't telling you to see him, you got to do it. Go ahead. And to all and to all the people that are in all the provinces of the king of Ahasuerus. Yes, sir. Go ahead. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad uh, unto all women, so that they shall despise. They shall despise despise of Mordecai. Wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews. So verse seventeen. Before this deed, the queen shall come abroad. Unto all the women, so that they sh shall despise their husband in their eyes. And when it shall be reported, the king of Hasmoneth commanded Vestit, the queen, to be brought in before him. But she came not. So this is the law that he, we got, this, like I said, this is the law that they had. You disrespected this man in front of all these people. All these people. This your husband. And therefore, that, she's going to get taken down. Go ahead. Likewise shall the lady of Persia and Media say this day unto all the king's princes, yes, sir. which have heard of the deed of the queen, mm -hmm. thus shall there arise too much content and wrath. Yes, sir. They're talking about this queen and how she disrespecting them. They're going to arise too much contempt and wrath, so he got to do something about this. Go ahead. If it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him. Yes, sir. And let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes. That it be not altered, that vastly vast come no more before King Ahasuerus, mm -hmm. and that the king give her royal estate unto another that is better than she. Understand, this woman was ruling, she was the queen. She had law, had everything, she had the palace, had the service, and everything. She wouldn't even come down. This pride. And you got a lot of this pride going on in a lot of marriages. Not just. Not just for husband, for wife, all of them. All of us are doing this. You know how we get in there, married people get in their feelings? But we got to follow the book. That's some work. Amen. It's some work. You feel with that? Let's go to Esther, uh, Esther chapter 2 and verse 1. 
Let's see what happened to uh, the king. The kings got rid of her, and he had to replace her. He's going to replace her with a good woman. She didn't have pride. Esther, Esther, uh, Esther chapter 2 and verse 1. Go ahead. After these things, when the wrath of King Ahasuerus was appeased, uh -huh. he remembered vastly and what she, she had done. Yes, sir. And what was decreed against her. Mm -hmm. Then said the king's servant that ministered unto her, unto him, let there be a fair young virgin sought, by, sought for the king. So the king going to go find another queen. Got rid of Vastin because she was disrespectful. And now he's going to go find a, a, another fair virgin, which we're going to know is going to be um, Esther. John 9, verse 5. Let's see the characteristics of it, what, what he was looking for. Go ahead. Now in Shushan, the palace, there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, mm -hmm. the son of Jaar, uh, and the son of Shemiah, yes, sir. the son of Kish, and a Benjamin. Yes, sir who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captivity which had been carried away with Jeconiah, king of Judah, whom mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. And he brought, he brought up Hadassah, Hadass? Hadassah, uh -huh. that is Esther, his uncle's daughter. So he brought in Esther to take the, be the queen. He was observing her, trying to see if she gonna be uh, ready to do so. One thing about the man of God, he looking for a righteous woman. I said a man of God now. The dudes on the street they ain't looking for a righteous woman at all. They look for somebody to have some fun with. But this woman right here did well. Esther, go ahead. Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother. Uh-huh. And the maid was fair and beautiful, whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for her, took for his own daughter. So Mordecai took her and raised her, Esther. Go ahead. So it came to pass when the king's commandments and his decrees was heard, and when many maidens were gathered together unto Shushan, the palace, to the custody of Hagar, mm -hmm. that Esther was brought also unto the king's house, to the custody of Hagar, keeper of the women. So she brought it to the king's house. Jump down to verse 10. Go ahead. Esther had not, Esther had not showed her people nor had her kindred, for Mordecai had charged her that she should not show you. So at the time he kept her in the house, he got a right for the king, she had, to, she had to be purified and everything for a while. He made sure she was right. But jump down to verse 15. I'm just showing you that difference between a woman who invested with had a lot of pride, how she lost it, and then had this woman right here who didn't have pride. She was all about helping her, helping her husband, which is the king. Go ahead. Fifteen. Now, with the turn of Esther, the daughter of Ab uh, Abahel, uh -huh. the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go in unto the king. Yes, sir. She required nothing but what Haggai, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women, appointed, and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. So he had all the women there, and he chose Esther. She was the one who had caught his eye, basically. Go ahead. So Esther was taken unto King Ahasuerus unto the house, the house royal in the tenth month. Yes, sir. Which is the month of Tibet, uh -huh. in the seventh year of his reign. Mm -hmm. And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins. Yes, sir. So that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vesta. So he found this woman that didn't have his pride like Vesta had, and he crowned her. He crowned her. And what does he do? He did the same exact thing he did with Vesta. He's going to do for her. Go ahead. Then the king made a great feast unto all his princes and his servants, even Esther's feast, and he made a release to the prophets and gave gifts according to the state of the king. And when the virgins were gathered together the second time when Mordecai sat in the king's, in the king's gate, Go ahead. Esther, had, Esther had not yet showed her kindred nor her people as Mordecai had charged her. Mm. For Esther did the commandments of Mordecai like as when she was brought up with him. So she followed the instructions. She ain't got pride for that. She followed the instructions. She did the commandments of Mordecai. He told her how to get to this king. And Esther gonna do well for 
this king. Go ahead. And in those days, while Mordecai sat in the king's 